everyone. Good afternoon. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, I want to thank uh, my friend and colleague, Minister Parikar, for joining us here at the Pentagon uh, and visiting us today. Earlier this afternoon, uh, he and I visited the Pentagon's 9-11 memorial uh, 15 years ago this week. Our DOD community lost so many friends and colleagues, and our lot nation lost too many fathers and mothers, and brothers and sisters, sons and daughters. Unfortunately, I know also that the Indian Air Force recently experienced a tragedy of its own when one of its aircraft disappeared last month with nearly 30 people on board. On behalf of the men and women of the Defense Department, I offer our thoughts and our prayers for those missing and their families. And I thank Mr. Minister you for taking the time to come out to our memorial, even as Prime Minister Modi, when he was here in Washington not long ago, came to Arlington National Cemetery. It means a great deal to us and is reflective of the shared values which underlie our important relationship. Now, even before today's very productive discussion, which was our sixth meeting uh, since I became Secretary of Defense, I'd already spent more time with Minister Parikar than I have with any other defense counterpart anywhere in the world. And there are two reasons for that. One is Minister Parikar himself. He's a strong and effective leader. He's an innovator. He's a great partner and a true friend. He's already had a very busy trip to the United States, meeting with our teams from the Defense Innovation Unit Experimental, Cyber Command, DARPA, the Air Force, and others. And the second reason that Minister Parikar and I have spent so much time together is that, and I said this in Delhi this past April, the U.S.-India relationship is destined to be one of the defining partnerships of the 21st century. We share so much, so many interests and values, as well as a common vision for peace, for stability, and prosperity in the Indo-Asia Pacific region. And as Minister Parikar's busy itinerary and our extensive deliberations today demonstrate, that destiny is rapidly and surely becoming a reality. Earlier this summer, when President Obama and Prime Minister Modi met here in Washington, India was designated a major defense partner of the United States. And today, we move that partnership forward. This designation builds on the success of last year's framework for the U.S.-India defense relationship. It will facilitate defense trade and technology sharing with India on a level we reserve only for our closest friends and allies. And it will support both of what I've called the two important handshakes between our countries and our two militaries. The first is a strategic handshake. As the United States is reaching west in Ob President Obama's rebalance, India is reaching east in Prime Minister Modi's Act East policy, which will extend India's reach further into the broader <coughs> Indo-Asia Pacific region. India is already making so many important contributions as a security provider in that region, especially in the maritime domain. And the major defense partner designation in our recent agreements will allow us to work together even more closely. We see that deeper cooperation in many areas, including, for example, the bilateral logistics exchange memorandum of agreement that our governments formally signed earlier today which will help facilitate the deeper engagement between our two militaries. We see it in the exercises of greater complexity and gre greater and greater complexity that we're holding together, including June's successful exercise Malabar with Japan, I should note, August's RIMPAC exercise with many other countries, and in the Army exercise Yudabas, scheduled next month in India. We see it in the arrangement we recently concluded to exchange data on commercial shipping traffic. And we see our deepening military partnership and our increased work on maritime security overall. In fact, our inaugural maritime security dialogue in May was such a success we agreed to convene another before the end of this year. 
The major defense partner designation will also tighten the, the second handshake between our two countries, the technological one. Four years ago, the United States and India created the Defense Technology and Trade Initiative, DTTI, to leverage the convergence between our industrial and technological abilities in an unprecedented way. That initiative gr grasps hands with Prime Minister Modi's Make in India campaign. And we made important progress on that technological partnership today also. We agreed to advance a number of collaborative projects on jet technology, jet engine technology, on jet technology and jet engine technology, chemical and biological protection, aircraft carriers, and other systems uh, all by the end of the year. That collaboration will surely bring further cooperation, co-development, and co-production. These two handshakes have brought our two militaries together, closer together, and will continue to do so. And we're working together and networking with other Asia-Pacific militaries to provide the security and to promote the principles, including freedom of navigation and overflight, that have benefited so many in the region, including India. Going forward, and thanks to our meetings this week, the United States and India will work together in more and new ways to ensure the Asia-Pacific continues to be a region where everyone can rise and prosper. Before I turn it over to Minister Parakar, I have to say that I've been working on the U.S.-India defense relationship for several years now, actually for, I should say for many years, in fact, and it's been an important focus of both of my time as Defense Secretary and before that. I've never been more optimistic about this relationship, and I've never been more committed to its progress either. Minister Parakar and I are going to continue to work together to ensure that our two countries and our two militaries grow closer still. Thank you. And after Minister Parakar says a few words, we'll take your questions. Mr. Minister. Thank you, Dr. Qatar. I was deeply moved by my visit to Pentagon 9-11 Memorial. We in India feel your anguish and pain at being the target of terrorism. I thank Secretary Carter for joining me in my visit to the memorial. I'm also pleased to be at Pentagon again to meet Secretary Carter. I thank him for the warmth of his welcome. We have had excellent discussions and both of us are satisfied at progress we are making in our defense ties. As was noted, this is our sixth meeting in about a year. This reflects our shared intent to take India-US defense partnership forward. Indeed, defense cooperation between India and United States have never been stronger than is today. For this, I wish to thank Dr. Carter. It is, it is his vision, his deep personal commitment, and untiring work that has helped elevate our partnership to this level. I fully share his ambition and resolve to make India-US partnership one of the defining partnerships of the 21st century. We appreciate the decision of US government to designate India as a major defense partner. In our discussions today, we looked at how this could provide further energy and momentum to our partnership on defense technology and manufacturing. We agreed to continue efforts to establish a fast and efficient framework to encourage tie-ups between our defense companies. The United States is only is today one of the India's primary source of defense equipment. The U.S. has shared some of its cutting-edge platforms with India. We would like to take this forward through greater collaborative projects spanning even higher level of technology and through cooperation in manufacturing ventures. The DTTI, of which Secretary Car Carter is both founder and architect, met last month in Delhi. We decided to significantly expand the scope of its activities and the quality of exchange in DTTI. I am confident that we will be able to develop workable models of engagement covering newer areas even as we take forward ongoing collaborations in DTTI framework. The partnership between our armed forces has grown from strength to strength. The Indian armed forces deeply appreciate the strong capabilities of U.S. military and value their engagement with their U.S. colleagues. 
today india has more cooperative activities with the us military than any other country over the past few months our air forces have jointly exercised in red flag uh, you didn't uh, you yes. forgot Good. as have our navies in rimpac and malbar the army exercise yuddha abhyas is to be held shortly our decision to sign the lemoa today has made it easier for our armed forces to carry out joint activities such as training and exercise as well as hadr missions our engagement on maritime security is developing well india and the united states have a shared interest in freedom of navigation and over flight and un unimpeded commerce as part of rule based order in indo pacific our officials met in may 2016 for the inaugural maritime security dialogue we have tasked them to meet more vigor regularly as we implement the joint strategic vision the signing of white shipping agreement and the information exchange arrangement on aircraft carrier recently underlines our desire to work closely together in the maritime domain today we decided to further enhance our engagement on maritime domain awareness we also resolved to continue our cooperation on counter terrorism india and united states are fellow democracies our open and diverse societies are committed to peace however as the united states has shown there can be no compromise when we are faced with terrorism the forces that seek to undermine our progress and our ways of life require a comprehensive and robust robust response we appreciate the support from united states in our efforts to eliminate terrorism in india's neighborhood secretary carter and i agreed that countering terrorism is an important shared objective the partnership between india and united states is driven by our shared values and interests this was underlined by the warmth and the enthusiasm with which the us congress received prime minister sri narendra modi in june this year even as we meet in washington today the us secretary of state and the us commerce secretary are in delhi jointly meeting their indian counterparts to take forward our strategic and commercial partnership india is one of the fastest growing economies in the world recently we have further liberalized our policies on foreign investment including in the defense sector where up to 100% fdi is now permitted we have also given a major reforms push to the tax system with progress on gst combined with many flagship initiatives of prime minister including on ease of doing business this makes india one of the most attractive global business destination i wish to invite us industry with your support including the defense industry to be part of this new journey of hope and transformation in india i am delighted to have had another opportunity to work together with secretary carter in taking our bilateral defense partnership to even greater heights i look forward to continuing my discussions with him in coming days to advance our shared objectives of peace prosperity and progress thank you Secretary Minister, time for three questions. We'll begin with uh, Bob Burns of the Associated Press. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Secretary. A question for you about Syria. Um, the recent developments with Turkey intervening in northern Syria. Uh, your press secretary put out a statement this morning saying that these clashes that Turk forces are involved in with the Syrian Kurds, who are of course supported by the United States, is uh, has become an unacceptable development. and it's deeply concerning to you have you spoken directly to your turkish counterparts about these latest developments and also could you say whether by by intervening in this way against the kurds the syrian kurds have the turks actually are they actually hindering the fight against the islamic state and turning this into a quagmire good well th thanks bob i mean first we very much appreciate the efforts of both partners turkey and the syrian defense forces in the fight against ISIL they've both made material contributions we've worked with both of them and all of our interactions are intended to keep that going so yes we have called upon turkey to not to stick 
stay focused on the fight against ISIL and not to engage Syrian defense forces. And uh, we've had a number of contacts over the last several days, including, <coughs> very importantly, uh, the chairman spoke to his counterpart uh, just yesterday. And I'll, I'll actually be meeting with my counterpart face to face next week in Europe. Uh, and there have been other contacts as well uh, at all uh, levels, uh, emphasizing, first of all, I'll take Turkey to Turkey, that. Um, uh, the United States is, was very supportive and is very supportive of their general uh, counter-ISIL activities and everything they did to uh, secure the area between the border and Gerobolis and then westward, but not south of Gerobolis, nor to engage the Syrian Defense Forces. And as far as the uh, YPG portion of the Syrian Defense Forces is concerned to uh, maintain their understanding, which they have with us, and to continue to implement that understanding to withdraw their forces east of the Euphrates. And that, that would be, they are doing that, yes, um, but that's the understanding we have uh, with them, and we want to main, make sure that they continue that commitment. So we've called on both sides to uh, not fight with one another, to f continue to focus uh, the fight on ISIL. That's the basis of our cooperation with both of them, uh, and, and specifically not to engage one another and to, and to, to retain those geographic uh, commitments uh, that they've made. So that's the basis of our understandings with both of them and uh, the basis of all of our contacts and conversations with them, Bob. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, as you said in your opening remarks, this June, U.S. designated India as a major defensive partner. What does this mean in terms of technology transfer? Is there any technology which you don't want to share with India right now? And what about India's fight against terrorism in its neighborhood? And if I may draw your attention to South China Sea, the tension is brewing up there in the region. What role, how U.S. and India can work together to ensure that the peace is maintained and the global rules and regulations are followed in that part of the world? And Mr. Minister, Lemo was signed today. What does this mean for India? How do you respond to critics who say that this will open up bases for U.S. in Indian territories? Okay. Uh, thank you. Well, first of all, with respect to the major defense partnership agreement, that is a that is a very substantial change. Uh, it's an enormous change from 50 years of history and uh, a very substantial advance over just a few months ago. And here's the gist of it. It will allow the United States and India to cooperate, which, speaking from the U.S. point of view, in a way that we do only with our closest and most longstanding allies. That's a very big change. Now, what the specifics of that, one of the things I was able to tell Mr. Uh, uh, Parikar today is that he, the Indian government uh, sent us before our meeting today a very lengthy, detailed, and we thought very constructive paper about how to implement the, the um, major defense partnership understanding. One of the things I was able to tell him today is that we read that, I've read that, studied it very carefully, and I just told him that that's, that's an excellent basis for the implementation of the major defense partnership. What does that mean uh, specifically in, in terms of uh, uh, at, at right across the board? of what we do, whether they are co-production, co-development projects, uh, whether they are uh, exercises and uh, the kinds of things that we do operationally together. In all of those respects, the some of the barriers that were erected in the past when we, so to speak, didn't interact very much, all those being uh, uh, knocked down. And that gets to the second part, which is terrorism, which is one of the many missions on which we cooperate. And just to second what Minister Parikar said, I mean, the United States is quite clear in this regard and everywhere around the world, which is we oppose terrorism affecting anyone. Uh, and uh, that's certainly true 
uh, with respect to uh, terrorist acts perpetrated against the Indian people, and also I should mention the Indian military, uh, which has happened uh, as well. And this gives new scope for that as well. Also, maritime domain awareness, which gets to your next point, which is about South China Sea, but it's not just South China Sea. I think you mentioned the Andaman Sea, but anywhere uh, uh, where we in India share the principled view that uh, in matters of freedom of the seas and freedom of the commons and freedom of navigation, as in so many other matters, states need to take a principled view. Uh, where obey, abiding by the rule of law and uh, pursuing uh, disputes peacefully is fundamental. Uh, and um, we're able to operate together. Uh, the white shipping agreement was given. That's just one of the many examples of information sharing in the naval air area. And then last, if I may say something since you asked about Lamoa, uh, I'll say something about that as, as well. Uh, that's a, a very substantial enabler of our two countries to work together. Uh, now, of course, uh, and I, I want to make clear that what it does is make possible and make easier operating together when we choose to. It doesn't by itself create that uh, uh, those agreements. Those are the things that the two governments would have to agree on a case-by-case -case basis. But when they do agree, this is an agreement that makes it all go so much more smoothly and efficiently. It is fully mutual. In other words, we grant one another completely equal um, uh, access and ease under this uh, agreement. It's not a basing agreement of any kind, but it does make the logistics of um, joint operations so much easier and so much more uh, efficient. So I, I know you asked the minister that question, but I just thought I'd offer my views on that as well before he does. I think uh, Secretary Carter made it clear about the base part of it. It doesn't have anything to do with the setting up of base. It's basically logistic support to each other's fleet, uh, like supply of fuel, supply of uh, many other things which are required for uh, joint operations, humanitarian assistance, and many other relief operations. So it's basically will ensure that the both navies uh, can, be sub can be supportive of each other in the joint uh, uh, operations we do, exercises we do. And there is no provision for any base uh, or any sort of activities to set up a base in India. Final question for Bill Stewart. Right, Secretary. Um, getting back to Syria, do you believe that, the, that the Turkey shares your view of what the SDF is? Um, that you know, you're saying the YPG is moving back across the Euphrates and that SDF elements, presumably other ones, the Arab ones, would remain in places like uh, Manbij. Does, the, does Turkey share the view that that is acceptable, that the SDF construct itself can stay as long as the YPG is across the river? Well, or one, one, of the, well one of the things we're talking about is that, that with them is clarifying where different elements of the SDF are. And just to remind you, there are elements of the SDF that are a Kurdish and our YPG associated. Uh, we work with them in our common interest to defeat ISIL and to move from Manbij and then on to Raqqa and destroy ISIL uh, in Syria. Um, we also understand that the YPG part of the SDF is one that is that Turkey has serious and uh, historical objections to and practical current objections to that we also fully understand. So, uh, so uh, while we have that understanding with Turkey, they also understand that we uh, intend to and are working with the SDF to combat ISIL. Um, I, it, what's, what, is, what we can do and, and, and are doing with them 
is to clarify where the YPG elements of the SDF are and are not. And just to repeat what I said a little while ago, our understanding with uh, the SDF as a whole, including the YPG elements of it, is that the YPG, after the Manbidge operation, will and is, will withdraw and is withdrawing east of the Euphrates. That will naturally separate them from Turkish forces that are heading down in Jarablus area, and provided Turkish forces stay where they are, which is securing, as which we another thing we fully support, they're securing their own border uh, north of the Jarablus uh, area. They shouldn't come into conflict uh, with one another. But we do understand that they have historical. Uh, differences with one another, but American interests are quite clear. Uh, we are, uh, we, uh, like they, want to combat ISIL, and we want, we're, out, we're calling on them all now, let's keep our priorities clear here, and helping them to uh, deconflict, so to speak, uh, on the battlefield. Minister, but also just to, to clarify, then you're not retooling your strategy. You're not changing your strategy when look, looking toward Raqqa as a result of any of this. No, our strategy has been very successful. The 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 SDF uh, proved very effective in Manbij, and Turkey is an extremely effective, uh, not uh, not only counter ISIL partner but but NATO ally. And, and uh, Mr. Minister, could you just give us a, a there, are, there are two other foundational agreements I believe that India is due to sign with the, with the United States on defense. Where do those stand? And also, you, sorry, and then also in Kashmir, Indian rule Kashmir. Um, what's being done to kind of lower tensions there? There have been uh, uh, protests for, for violent protests sometimes over the last 40 days or so. Thank you. The first is regarding the other two agreements. I think uh, after 12, 13 years, we have managed to get logistic agreement in place. You could see the mistrust. The logistic agreement was being mixed up with setting up of bases. So let me get this logistic agreement in the public domain properly explained to the people. Then we will definitely go into the other aspects. As far, far as Kashmir is concerned, I think the government of India has been very proactive. Uh, it's more of a violence uh, which comes from across the border. And curfew, if you are aware, curfew is already being lifted. I think it is already lifted yesterday. Third or fourth, all party team is also going. We are not, uh, it's Kashmir is actually having a government which is uh, democratically elected, and the chief minister belongs to the valley. So I think uh, you must have seen our press conference expressing that few small percentage is holding the majority at ransom. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Thank you all. Good to see everyone. And thank you, Mr. Minister, as always. Thank you.